Hello and welcome to Mr. Stanley's Chess Academy. This is the Expert Course Lesson 2. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a couple of openings for black. We are going to look at some ideas and patterns to look out for in the middle game. And then we're going to look at the idea of opposition in the end game, which is a very key idea for good end game play. So uh, first of all, um, openings. So we are uh, we're going to have a look at two black openings. So last time we looked at the Italian and the Spanish openings for white. So let's just uh, what we're going to do first of all is going to look at the two knights opening for black. So white's going to be playing the Italian game. So there we go, pawn to e4. Now um, the first move in the two knights opening is to move your black pawn to e5. So this is putting um, pressure on the um, on the square on d4. Uh, it's blocking the advance of the white pawn, um, and so it's a, it's quite a strong strong counter move. Um, white then plays the knight to a three and is attacking this pawn here. So uh, so for black's next move, we need to defend that pawn on um, e5. There are several ways to do this, but for the two knights opening, the way we do this is we move the knight onto c6 here. So it's now defending this pawn. So white might continue with the uh, Italian game there. And then the uh, third move in the two knights defence, it will be no surprise, is to move your other knight here. Now this is a very strong move because it is attacking this uh, pawn here, which uh, which means that white needs to uh, kind of lose a move trying to protect this pawn. It's also um, helping to put uh, pressure on this square here because uh, we might think about quite an aggressive move is moving this pawn up to to this square here uh, which will attack the bishop here um, and put pressure on this pawn here and that would also be defended by this queen of course so so the the the, the um, two knights opening is quite a, a simple straightforward opening but as you can see it's very effective because it looks, puts lots of pressure on the center. But also the uh, the knight here is defending this pawn here as well. So if we're looking to castle um, in the future, then also it's quite a, it is quite a good defensive position. Okay, so that is the um, the two uh, the two knight defense. So I'll just. Uh, oh, I'm having a few problems with my board. Just, just, just one second, please. It's very, very slick video, of course. There we are. So that is the two, uh, the two nights evening. Now the second opening I'm going to show you is a, a, a very strong opening for black called the King's Indian Defence. Um, and so let's just imagine that white's going to be playing the Italian game again. Now uh, on this move, uh, the next move for black isn't to move the King's pawn forward like this, uh, which seems to be a bit of a reflex reaction. Uh, for the King's Indian Defence we move this we move the um, queen's pawn up one here. Now, what this move does is it defends this square. So if white was thinking about moving their pawn up again, then they can't. So it's blocking that advancement. But it's also meaning that this pawn here is kept, uh, kept defensive. So it's still keeping part of this defensive line here not creating any gaps in your defense. So it's a very, uh, this is a very um, a defensive move to play. White might continue with the Italian game. Now, 
For your second move for the King's Indian, you want to move this pawn, the G pawn, forward one. Um, and we'll talk about why you're going to do that in the next move, so why it might continue. Italian game there. Now, this, what you do next as black is a very uh, key idea to become a good chess player. This is called a fincetto in your bishop. So it's a fincettoed bishop. What it means is moving your bishop here onto g7. If you were white, it would be g2 or b2. Or if it was black, it would be b7. And what this does is it is it allows this bishop to threaten this whole diagonal. So this is the longest diagonal on the board. And it's putting pressure on these two central squares and this outer central square and this outer central square. It's also indirectly attacking the rook here. So it's a really powerful move for the bishop to take. Um, and so the idea is, is that even though you haven't put a piece in the center of the board, this bishop is actually attacking, taking control of two of these squares indirectly. Okay, so uh, it's a really powerful idea to try and fincetto your bishops, and it's part of the, the king's Indian defense here. So uh, that's your next move, is to move your bishop there. So um, why in this position they might move their, move their uh, knight out there? Now, the next move in the king's Indian is to move your knight onto f6. Okay. Um, and for reasons we talked about uh, with the two knights defence, this is putting pressure on the centre here. But it's also a very good defensive move because it's protecting this pawn on h7, which can come under attack. Uh, white at this point, white castle. Oh no, we'll take its own knight, rook. There we go, uh, white castle. And at this stage for the uh, King's Indian, you castle. And there we are. That's the, the basic pattern of the King's Indian. And it's called the King's Indian because you are doing it on the King's side. Um, there is also a Queen's Indian where you can set up this position, but on the other side of the board. And that would be called the Queen's Indian defence. But as you can see, this is such a strong defensive position because um, you have got, uh, you've got all of these uh, powerful pieces protecting the king here and you've also got a very strong pawn structure and so the idea is is that you'll sit back and wait for white to batter down this defense and when they fail you can then counter attack um, some very good players know how to very easily dismantle a king's indian defense uh, but against you know intermediate players it is a very strong defense to play so let's just go over those two um, those two openings again. So we'll start with the two knights defence. So if uh, white does this, the two knights defence, your move is so pawn to e5. And now as black, your next move is that's right, knight to c6, defending this pawn. And now the, your third move in the two knights defence is that's right, it's getting the other knight out. Let's just have, see if we can go the two knights defence again. So, do that. Your move is... That's right, it's this. And white does this. Your move is... That's right, it's this. Bishop to c4. And then your move is... That's right, it's second knight. So nice and simple. Learn it off by heart, uh, a very strong, simple start to the game for black. Let's have a look at a slightly more complex King's Indian. So white does that, your move is, it's the Queen's Pawn, just one. Your next move is, G Pawn, just one. Your move is, Fincetto your bishop. Your next move is 
moving out the knights here. And your next move is That's right, you castle as well. And there we are, the King's Indian. Let us go through that again. Uh, the King's Indian. So just for any openings, I strongly recommend that either now you sort the video or at the end of the video you get your own chessboard out and you practice doing the two knights defence and the King's Indian defence just to make sure you do it again and again and again, learn it off by heart so that when you come to play a game you can um, put it into action instantly. Okay, so those are, those are a couple more openings for you. So now move on to the middle game. And um, when we talked uh, last time about doing puzzles to try and improve your tactics, um, there are certain kind of themes and patterns to look for in puzzles, but also themes and patterns to look for in the middle game of chess to kind of help your strategic position. So, so because you might just be looking at a chessboard and you think, oh, what's, uh, what move can I do next? What would be a good move? I can't see any checkmates come out. But you need to look to achieve certain, um, certain patterns, certain tactics, things that we call in the trade motifs, certain motifs to look for. So I'm going to introduce you to three motifs. The first motif um, is what we call a fork. So um, just some kind of hypothetical imaginary game where the players aren't too good. So a fork is where you attack two pieces at once with one of your pieces. Okay, so in this situation, uh, white can play a really powerful move, which is to move their knight onto c7. And this is a fork because the next move, the knight can take the rook here, but it's also attacking the king. So the king's in check, the king must move. And so the next move, the knight can capture the uh, rook there and um, white has got his five points up. So these, these forks can be very, very powerful. And it doesn't, um, necessarily have to be um, have forking the king. So if, for example, we had a rook here on h4, so this knight here could now come and move to g3 and is attacking both the queen and the rook and so this again is a fork. And so black would think, well, I've got to choose one or the other. I can't save them both. So black would probably move the king out, uh, queen out of the way, and then the knight would take the, um, the rook. So these forks can happen really, really uh, often, especially against inexperienced players. Um, and, and have a look for them. So you might you might be in say this situation um, like like this, and you might think, well, what should my next move be? Well, uh, well, actually, if I move my knight here, it means that black can't move their queen out because if they do, they're leaving this pawn unguarded, and then I could come in for a fork. So, um, so think very carefully about where you can see forks. You might not be able to pull off a fork, but if you work towards uh, making a fork happen, then you might reduce the options left, o left open to your opponent. And it's not just um, knights that can fork, um, that, um, that also 
uh, bishops can fork as well. So say we are in um, say we're in this position here where we have a, a rook here on um, a6 and a knight here on g2 then um, the bishop if the bishop's placed on e2 then it is forking as well okay so uh, bishops can fork too but it's rarer to find a fork with a bishop um, uh, really the main piece to look for forking is your is your um, knight okay so that's forking have a look for forks all the way around the board the um the next motif the next idea to look out for is what we call in trade a pin so if we uh if we're playing a game here and uh this is quite a common position um if you were doing the king's indian of course um now if the black bishop comes along here then what they're doing is they're pinning this knight here so this knight now cannot move because if it does then black will take the queen so it is it is pinned in position by this bishop so this this idea of pinning is a very powerful one because it means again it, it it stops your opponent moving some of the pieces they need to do and they need to give up some of their moves to try and resolve this problem so they might try and chase you away with this pawn uh, and, you, and you would then retreat and then they try and chase you away with this pawn and then retreat here and and there you've, you've exposed a bit of a gap in the enemy's defense and you're not, and um and you're actually still in quite a strong position so, so have a look out for these pins. Um, they can also be very powerful um, by pinning a piece uh, in check. So um, if we just have a look at this opening, for example, then on this side, the bishop can come down and you've pinned the knight here because it can't move at all because the king's in check there. So again, need to give up moves in order to um, in order to uh, uh, get this this knight moving. Okay, so look for pins as well around the board. In a little game, go think. Oh, could I pin a piece there? Could I pin a piece there? And that will give you a strategic advantage. The third motif to look out for is um, a revealed check so i'm just going to um set up a a purely a purely theoretical position um like this and so so we have here the queen uh can should be able to check the king here but the bishop is in the way so this isn't check However, it, it gives what we call a revealed check. So this means that the next move, the, um, the bishop can move wherever it likes, can take whatever it likes, and the king will be in check. So for example, if the bishop would like to go and take this pawn, it's check. Black might think, oh, I can take that bishop. No, they can't because they need to sort out this problem of check. So they'll probably need to move their bishop they'll need to move their bishop here, for example, or move the queen there whilst the, whilst the bishop then goes on to take the rook. So, um, and these, these revealed checks can happen um, throughout the game. So have a look out for them. But what it effectively does is it gives you a free move uh, in order to, in order to, to advance your, um, what you're trying to achieve. So, uh, another kind of quick made up example um, so this position here uh, and then you go and take the rook there and then um, that is again a revealed check okay so uh, revealed checks 
look out for them see if you can find them and if you're doing puzzles then um, have a look out for those ideas of being a pinning of a fork and of a revealed check okay and finally on to the end game so um, we looked last time at how to get checkmate with a king and a pawn um, and one of the one of the things we didn't explore one of the things which really help you is this is the idea of um, of opposition so here we have two kings and and um, it's say it's a white uh, white to move we would say in this situation that white has opposition what does that mean what it means is is that white this move can move to e4 and they are taking control of these three squares so the black king cannot enter these three squares so white's king is limiting the movement of black's king so if black's king for example now went here then white's king could go here and it's blocking its path here. So white's king might go, well, I'll, I'll go over here. And um, black king and the white king is stopping it. Okay, so um, it, it sort of sh means that the, that, the, um, that the white king can really limit the black, the black king's moves. So if the um, white king, black king, for example, says, I've had enough of this, I'm going back over here then the, um, the white king needs to think very carefully about its next move. Because if the white king now goes, I don't know why it keeps doing that. If the white king now goes to c5, this will mean that the black king, by moving to c7, will now have opposition. And it's now the black king that is controlling the white king. So in this position, in order to get opposition, to keep opposition, the white king needs to move to d5, because then if the black king, say, moves to b6, white king moves to d6, and now has opposition. Uh, if the black king moved to d7 instead, white king moves to c5, has opposition okay so so this is is quite a complex idea and it doesn't bring any immediate benefits to to uh, to the game immediately and until you bring you bring a pawn into the into the equation so if you're in this situation and you want to bring the pawn up then the black wants to attack that pawn wants to come up the board but you'll see that because you have opposition, you are preventing the black king from doing that. So if the um, black king goes there, you can keep it pinned where you want where you want him um, by by having opposition, and then you can then open up. This flank here, keep opposition until you're controlling these three squares to get home. If um, white doesn't have opposition, then that is far harder. So um, if, in, if in this situation it is, uh, so say in this situation it's white's move, then that is a different proposal because if white moves here, suddenly they have lost. Um, they have lost opposition, and uh, black can make things very difficult for white. With that move, or with this move to the side, where things get very difficult for for white here, and black could probably get a stalemate. So the idea of opposition, the idea that um, you, as the attacking king, are pinning and positioning the black king by taking control of these three squares in front of it. 
So uh, have a little play about with it um, on the chessboard and see if you can get, um, if you can find out different patterns where you can gain opposition um, and it's quite a powerful thing to establish over your opponent's king in the end game. Okay, so um, so we've looked today at the two knights opening. We've had a look at the king's Indian defence. We've had a look at the ideas of forking, pinning, and a revealed check. And we've also looked at opposition in the end game. So uh, next time we'll have a look at um, to even more um, openings for your opening repertoire. We'll have a look at some puzzles involving pings and forks and revealed checks. And we shall look at um, some other tactics and strategies to look for in a pawn king endgame.